So retro computer gaming has actually been big lately, and I have found a lot of people requesting these old dedicated retro gaming computers. Looking at the prices, it can be quite pricey to get yourself a decent one and build a dedicated one, especially if you're going the whole voodoo route. So a neighbor reached out to me and says, hey, I'm throwing out an old computer. It's in the trash. If you want it, come get it. If not, the trash man's going to have fun with it. So me being me, absolutely. Sweet. So after digging through the trash, he threw away this, a Dell Dimension L800R, the whole Pentium 3 action. Pretty nice. Uh, Windows ME serial number, no bueno with Windows ME. Got the whole mouse with the trackball, which is pretty stinking sweet. The keyboard that came with it, Dell Quiet Key, very nice. Feels pretty good, not too dirty. PS2 action going on, PS2 action going on. So. It would have been nice if he would have just came over to the house, had some adult beverages, maybe dropped it off in the garage, instead of me going through the trash and picking it up. But it's okay. I think this would be worth it. So now I want to go ahead and open it up. It has like this little latch right up here. I think you just pull out. And this pops right open. Pretty tight in there. So a green lever probably goes down. This pops right out. Yep. Now she's kind of looking very dusty probably hasn't been open in ages and no matter what surface I touch I'm able to pull up a good chunk of dust and it's a little sticky too so now looking up a little history for this thing this thing was released back in 2000 came with the pole Pentium 3 and the retail for it was about $900 just for the 800 megahertz spec and a lot higher because you can actually get a 1 gigahertz spec for it now the memory had two slots and typically it came with 128 megs, but you could max it out with 512 megs. Not sure on what version I have, so this may be 256 or maybe 512. We're hoping for the 512. We have a little Foxconn fan right over here. Um, pretty nice. Three pin, and they were typically noisy because they just went full beans on it. Our chipset was the Intel 810 chipset, and this one actually had a integrated graphics card, which this system does have. 145 watt power supply, a Maxter 10 gig hard drive, floppy drive, and a LG 48 speed CD-ROM drive. Not the whole burner action. We got our PS2, two USBs, which is the 1.0 version, I believe. VGA, serial, parallel, all that good stuff. Got the sound card, which I believe is the CT5078. If I'm wrong on quoting that, I'll correct it, which pretty much you can use a Sound Blaster 128 PCI driver. That works good on it. Ethernet and a dial up modem. Yep, pretty old. So now I was told that before throwing it away, it did work, it did fire up. They said the issue with it was that the hard drive went bad with it, which, I mean, it doesn't surprise me as old as it is. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take this apart, give this a pretty good cleaning, that way it has a fair chance of surviving, install Windows 98 and play some of these classic games and I think we should have a good time with it and then once we kind of go through it I'll talk about the exact specific specs that we have on it and some thoughts so let's get to the whole cleaning gaming montage <laughs> So I figured before we put it back together, go ahead and show you exactly uh, what we got. So this is our Pentium 3. It's an 800 megahertz one. So not the one gig, but still pretty cool. This is our memory. This is PC 133. We got two 256 megs chips on it. Went ahead and removed this weird 
pad or whatever it was. I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, it's like a piece of paper. So went ahead and moved it, cleaned it up. Goo gone for this stuff. Definitely goo gone. Cleans it up pretty good. And we'll put some fresh thermal paste over there. Our 56K Industry Canada. Yeah, you don't see this too much around. So I'm definitely going to put it back in just for the nostalgia sentimental aspect of it our sound blaster uh correction from earlier this is actually the this is the ct5807 but you could use the uh sound blaster pci 128 sound drivers for it um definitely good for that our ethernet nothing too fancy over here uh rtl8029 as so that's that a sony floppy drive which i like the sony floppy drives september of 2000 so this is 22 years old pretty cool our cd-rom drive which we talked about earlier which it is the light on one uh let's see one two three four pci slots on it which is pretty cool kind of wish i had a visa slot because you could actually use some of the uh, older sound cards and get some better midi on it so cleaned it up and i guys gotta say glass cleaner I don't know, this stuff works really good on cleaning like these cases and stuff. So I just want to show you guys all that. So let's put this thing back together. So I gotta say, this old Dell couldn't be happier of how it turned out. Installation of Windows 98, although long, was fantastic. No issues, no hiccups, no headaches. Yes, we had to wait for the long load times and wait times and hunting down drivers, but outside of that, it was pretty straightforward and it just brought back some good memories. Now this thing was dusty and crusty and I did have my doubts considering that it was just tossed and a lot of times people toss things because bad power supplies or the hardware just goes out completely but simple TLC, some cleaning and it works phenomenal. Now one may argue that you can do a complete restore and really bleach the case and give it that whole nice refurbished look but I gotta say I like the patina and I like the little battle scars as I would say that comes with it and I don't want this thing to look like a complete restore I do want it to look antiquish now as far as the games I mean it's just awesome to be able to play some of these old games and uh, really bring them back to life yes you have DOS box and scum VM and all those other stuff but just using the dedicated machine that was designed for it is pretty nice now some may argue that a lot of the games that i did play are not true windows 98 games in which i get it but we're not completely done with this build now i do have planned for some upgrades and these upgrades will allow me to play uh, some of the better windows 98 titles but one of the biggest issues with this one is staring me right in front of the face and it's that integrated graphics card it totally sucks trying to play some of the new games i mean lack of 3d support and just lack of power and beans I was limited on some of the games I could play so future upgrades that's the first thing that we're gonna be doing 
Now as far as graphics cards, I would love to put a Voodoo 3 in here, but honestly, you're probably going to have to sell your firstborn child just to be able to afford them as the prices of them are ridiculous, especially if you need to go the whole PCI route. The AGP ones are a little bit more affordable, but I've seen the PCI ones go as high as 300 plus, and yeah, I'm not willing to spend that much money on a 20 year old graphics card, although it would be the ideal graphics card for this. Now there are some better options and better graph and decent graphics cards that will actually work and allow me to play some of the Windows 98 games that I do want to play. So I might have to look into them, but even then finding PCI graphics cards for about a hundred dollars is not appealing, but it might have to be done just to kind of get that experience I want. And another upgrade that I will be seeking to do in the future is actually going to be a better sound card. Number one, it'd be nice to have that whole MIDI game port thing going on so I can actually plug in a controller. Nothing like the Gravis gamepad to get things going. And also have better MIDI options for the uh, DAS gaming so you get more of that true sound. So that is something that I will be considering. And what's crazy is the PC market for this. Um, this one, I've seen this go on eBay with the low specs for about $100, upwards of $300 with the upgraded graphics card and sound card, yes. But considering for the fact that I got this thing for free, I think it's a pretty good deal in the sense that, yes, if I spend $100 on a PCI graphics card, that'll actually give this a real good Windows 98 experience, I'm still ahead and I probably could flip it for two, dollars $300 as I've seen it in my local marketplace going for that much, something like this. And considering the size, the size is what really sells considering how compact, small, and even quiet it is. And it'll definitely have enough beans to give you a good retro gaming experience. But for now, I'm going to start hunting down the old eBay and seeing what I could find on it. Very happy with Windows 98 Second Edition. This thing actually did come with uh, Microsoft Windows ME, which is horrible. Poor native DAWs support, a lot of drivers issues. But Windows 98 does work great on it and very happy with the performance on it. So overall, a cool little build. I enjoy it. I enjoy playing these old games on the native system they were designed for. And the good thing about it is there's a lot of great games from the learning company that uh, are very educational. And my own kid be could be able to sit down, play some of these games, and I don't have to worry about her connecting to the internet with this thing and trying to play something else. But that's another story. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned because there will be future upgrades and future things with this. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.